Microsoft recently announced that Great Plains is reaching its end of life in 2025. So what does that mean to you and what are your options? I'm gonna talk about that here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients through their digital transformation journeys. And not surprisingly, Microsoft has announced that their flagship Great Plains product, which has been around seemingly forever, is being discontinued. Now, Microsoft acquired Great Plains back in 2000, so Microsoft has owned the product for about 20 years now. And it's always been considered a good, viable alternative to QuickBooks and other financial systems that small and mid-sized companies use. In fact, we still see a lot of clients that are still using Great Plains. They're happy with the product. In some cases, they're upgrading to a different system, but we still have lots of clients that use the product. But Microsoft, as with most vendors and products out there, at some point announced that the product will end. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use the product past 2025. It just means that Microsoft won't support it. So if you're an organization that is concerned about this deadline in 2025, or if you're concerned because you've outgrown the product and you're looking for something more robust and more complete to help your organization scale, I wanna talk about the three primary options you have and objectively talk about the pros and cons of those three options. Now, the first option you can consider and the one that Microsoft would probably prefer you consider is you can move from Great Plains to Dynamics 365. Now, a big part of why Microsoft is discontinuing Great Plains and other products in its portfolio is to try and get those legacy Microsoft customers to move to Dynamics 365. Now, Dynamics 365 is where Microsoft is spending most of its R&D in its ERP space. It's not spending as much R&D on Great Plains and Exapta and Division and some of those legacy products that have been around for a long time. So it's in Microsoft's best interest to see you move to Dynamics 365 so the question becomes, is it in your best interest? Now, Microsoft will tell you that there's an ease of transition because you're moving from one Microsoft product to another. But the reality is, is this would be a re-implementation. You really don't get much economy of scale or efficiency gain by sticking with Microsoft, other than the fact that it has that common Microsoft look and feel. Dynamics 365 is a completely different animal. It's largely the equivalent of implementing a non-Microsoft product as well. Now, the good news is Dynamics 365 is going to allow you to scale better than Great Plains, most likely. It's most likely going to give you a broader set of capabilities than what you're getting with Great Plains. So while Great Plains was really focused on core financials and inventory management, and you're more vanilla basic ERP capabilities, D365 starts to get into a whole host of new emerging technologies, CRM, manufacturing, machine learning, artificial intelligence, a lot of these newer technologies and more advanced ERP capabilities are inherent and built into Dynamics 365. Now, the caveat to that is that D365 is still a work in progress. It hasn't been around nearly as long as Great Plains and some of the other Microsoft products. So it doesn't have quite the maturity level and quite the established base of customers using the product as some of these older products, but it's a work in progress and more and more customers are using the product and Microsoft continues to invest heavily in the Dynamics 365 product. So exploring D365 in a re-implementation or an upgrade to D365 is certainly one option that you have as you consider your path forward. Now, because Dynamics 365 is not a perfect solution and no product out there is a perfect solution, by the way, it may be worth considering other ERP options as well. If you're considering Dynamics 365, maybe you consider Oracle, or maybe you consider NetSuite or other different systems out there. And that is a pretty healthy exercise to go with, even if you are leaning toward staying with a Microsoft suite of products, it can be helpful just to make sure that you're exploring your options, understanding what the different options are out there, and at the very least, getting some negotiating leverage as you consider a new contract with Microsoft. Now, the thing to consider here is that there are a lot of options that have come into the marketplace that can be good alternatives to D365 and certainly good alternatives to Great Plains. So depending on what industry you're in, you may wanna consider those other options. Now, another nuance that's very unique to Microsoft and the Microsoft channel is that you don't only need to consider the core Dynamics 365 product. You can also consider what I would consider more of a hybrid option, which is third-party solutions that are based on the D365 platform, but it's 
tailoring that platform for specific industries or functions. So for example, there's something called ISVs or independent software vendors out there that take the D365 product and they tailor it for specific industries like manufacturing or aerospace, professional services, et cetera. And there's a whole plethora of options out there as it relates to ISVs in the Microsoft space. So you could consider Microsoft ISVs as alternatives to the core D365 product. You could also look at non-Microsoft ISVs as well, vendors such as Oracle, SAP, Epicor, Infor, Workday, et cetera. All those are potential options that you might consider, but the key is to objectively look at your options and understand what the cost benefit of going to Dynamics 365 versus looking at other options or versus other options you might have in the marketplace. Now, the third option, which may seem counterintuitive, but it certainly is worth considering, is to stay with Great Plains. There's nothing suggesting that you need to move away from Great Plains. It's just suggesting that you're not going to have the level of support that you have right now after 2025. So for some organizations, especially if you're risk adverse, or you've got very limited resources, or you just don't feel like going through the heartache of an ERP replacement, you could stick with Great Plains. Now, the thing to consider here is even though that may be your lower cost and lower risk option in the short term, you have to ask yourself, what is the longer term cost benefit in terms of lost opportunity, the lost opportunity of keeping up with technology and having new emerging technologies help enable and further your business. Those other options may be a higher cost and higher risk option in the short term, but longer term, it may deliver a more positive or a more favorable return on investment. So that's the way to look at it is to consider what is that cost benefit? You're gonna have two different risk profiles, two different cost profiles, and two different benefit profiles if you stick with Gray Plains versus going in a different direction. So really quantitatively and objectively comparing those two options can be an important way to consider whether or not you might want to remain on Gray Plains in the long term. So I've given you three primary options that we see Microsoft Gray Plains customers consider. They're not mutually exclusive, by the way. You may consider all three of these options and you may wanna compare the pros and cons and the cost benefit of all three options. And if you decide to pursue that second option of non-Microsoft products and options, you wanna make sure that you get an objective view or what are those best fit options so that you're not getting caught up in analysis paralysis, overanalyzing the hundreds of different systems out there that may not be a good fit for your organization. So if you'd like to learn more about what some of those leading systems are in the marketplace, I encourage you to download our 2021 Digital Transformation Report. That's an annual report we published that outlines our independent rankings and reviews of different ERP systems in the marketplace. It also explores best practices and digital transformations in ERP implementations in general. It's a must read for anyone about to go through any sort of transformation. So I encourage you to download that report. And I've also included a number of other Microsoft and non-Microsoft related resources below, depending on what direction you may go, those resources may help you as well. So I hope you found this information useful. Hope you have a great day.